<clears throat> so hi, hello everyone. Hi, hello and welcome. Microbe Hunter here. Welcome to another Saturday live stream. I'm happy that you could join in again uh, this week. Um, today, um, yes, uh, I would like uh, to um, uh, yeah, do a few random things that I would like to show you. Uh, some water fleas. I've, I've made a little aquarium for water fleas, which I would like to show you. Um, and uh, also I would like to show you how um, uh, I'm using a micrometer slide and I also would like to show you a few pictures that some people have sent me um, yeah, from, uh, from uh, who've uh, made some filters um, and uh, I've uh, received a couple of, of pictures here. Now I see that uh, some of you have already started to comment in the comment section and uh, I think that uh, everything seems to be fine, the sound is good, thank you very much for the feedback. Um, and uh, yes, um, as people are joining in, I usually have to wait a few minutes at the beginning until people are joining in. Um, what I would like to always do um, at the beginning right now is simply to encourage you, if you have any questions which are microscopy related, please feel free to post them. Um, to make it easier for me to find the comments, please uh, write an at microbehunter or at Oliver so that I can quickly scan through the comments and then I'm able to, um, to find uh, your comments and your questions more easily. I will try my best um, to answer them. Okay, um, yes, uh, what we have right now is the following is that many people already started to, to join in uh, from Lebanon, Connecticut, the United States, Vietnam, Northern Germany, okay, Germany, from Belgium, Netherlands, the UK, Slovakia, um, yes, uh, from Germany, Rhode Island, United States, Okay, very nice. Um, uh, um, Greece, uh, California. So um, everyone's uh, from around the world likes microscopy. So and what I would like to do now is is I would like to um, share with you a couple of pictures uh, first um, that uh, are basically I I got sent uh, from someone. Thank you very much. And if you are also part of the for, uh, of the um, of the chat form, then yeah, if you can you can say basically that you were the one who sent the pictures. Okay, um, some really nice pictures. Uh, of uh, homemade, uh, yeah, some specimens using homemade filters. A few weeks ago, I talked about so-called Rheinberg filters. Rheinberg filters give you a lot of color. And I would like to show this uh, to you. And I would like to, yeah, so um, these are the pictures that, uh, thank you, again, uh, was sent. It's an epidermis of a leaf. And these are color filters, okay? Sugar crisps at 40 times. You see that it's very colorful. And uh, I made a video out of those pictures. This is a cockroach trachea spiracles at 40 times. Basically, the insect uses that for breathing. Salt crystals at 100 times magnification. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, this here is in uh, oblique illumination. It's strided muscle of a, of a fly larva. And uh, yeah, and uh, it's a sugar crystal at uh, 100 times. Again, and now the video loops again. What I would like to do is write, uh, read out some comments here. Epidermis of a leaf, Rheinberg illumination with partially swung out filter holder and two homemade nail polish filters. Now the sugar crystals here are also partially swung out filter holder and condenser height adjusted. And it's uh, yeah, the personal favorite. The cockroach trachea, yeah, it's just regular Rheinberg illumination. And those tubes that you see are important for breathing. The salt crystals are Rheinberg illumination and condenser height has been adjusted. So um, raising and lowering the condenser is quite important here. Th this is uh, the fly larva, slight oblique illumination stacked on top of each other. Um, so basically, thank you for the idea of the idea basically of stacking, um, of stacking uh, yeah, filters on top of each other. And the last one was a sugar crystal um, and condense also the condenser height uh, adjusted. So you see this is a uh, very nice pictures and it actually shows that you do not need any fancy equipment uh, to get color into your um, specimens. Um, and uh, if you don't know how to make those filters, I actually uh, uh, presented uh, some of them um, in one of my previous live streams. They're very easy to make and if your microscope has a filter holder, then I highly encourage you that you try out making your own um, yeah, Rheinberg filters as well. Okay, so um, uh, yeah, very artistic, um, and uh, um, I think it uh, looks uh, quite uh, quite nice. It's one of those um, examples from microscopy meets art. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, so basically, before you invest a large amount of money in trying to upgrade your microscope in whatever way, um, I recommend that you play around with filters here. Okay. Um, okay. 
Yes, uh, there is an important question here uh, that is um, I've asked to join the form using filling out the information verifying that I was not uh, not a bot but I have not received verification on the post. Thank you for asking. Um, the situation is as follows. I, I do have a forum and um, I receive a lot of spam registrations. So what I would like to ask you is, is after you've registered, please send me an email with your um, login name or your email address and then I will immediately unlock you. Okay, um, but but unfortunately, I've, um, even, even though there is a question there, and you also have to provide a justification why you want to join the forum, and the reason for this justification is, is that um, I know that you're not an, um, a, a spam bot, but these days with artificial intelligence, uh, even the AI systems are able to fill out um, those forms now in such a way that they're pretending to be human beings. Yeah, so um, that, that's a little bit the reason why I'm, I'm a little bit restrictive now. Um, but if you've signed up, uh, and please drop me an email um, that you've signed up, and then I'll immediately unlock your account, and then you can join the form. Okay, that's unfortunately something that um, yeah that we have to that I'm uh, currently um, dealing with. This is a lot of of of, um, of fake registrations. Okay, so um, that's basically uh, yeah. This was for uh, yeah a question concerning the form. So let me go back again here. So what I would like to do first is I would like to, um, yeah, uh, that's the thing here. I would like to first uh, talk a little bit, uh, some theory um, again, um, and then I would like to show you a little bit, um, yeah, how I've made some scale bars. I would like to talk a little bit generally about magnification, and then if you feel that the theory is a little bit too dry for you, that's why I've um, also prepared some water fleas where we can uh, observe some water fleas um, later on. So just a second, uh, where is this? So what I would like to do is I would like to explain first of all the stage micrometer that you see up there. Maybe um, some of you already know how to use it. Um, yeah, if not, then I would like to explain that because that is already very useful for making measurements under the microscope. Okay, And what I've done here is, is I've actually um, made a little uh, model here. Um, a paper model. Yeah, by the way, that's why if you um, move this, um, yeah, you can see that yeah, the two scales are kind of moving uh, past each other, right? And with that, you're able to make very, very, not very precise, but reasonably precise measurements um, up to, as a matter of fact, a tenth of a millimeter. Okay, um, so um, I would like to now show you how to, how to do that. And one of the things that you should notice is, and that's why I made this uh, paper model here, um, so that it's easy for me to explain. And then I'm also going to show you a micrometer slide. Yeah, yeah. so, but uh, today's topic is a little bit about measuring things. And if you notice that the smaller scale, I have to actually maybe make this higher, okay, so that you see this better. You see that the smaller scale, um, is actually shorter than the larger one. Not only shorter, but you actually know, notice it goes, let me move this further, it goes here from one to 10, right? But look where the 10 ends. Yeah, it ends here at the, where the other one is nine, right? So it's uh, not, uh, yeah, it's shifted, uh, yeah? So uh, the, the lines are closer together, right? And that's of course on purpose. Because what you want to do is, is if you want to remember, for example, a certain position, yeah, um, or if you would like to measure some distances, um, you would like to have a very precise, uh, um, um, yeah, uh, uh, positioning. And let's say that you're kind of moving it like this, and uh, that it um, ends up somewhere like this over here, right? Um, then the question now is, is what values uh, do you write down, right? And um, it's actually quite easy. Um, what you do is, is, is now you uh, look at the zero value over here, and you see that it is uh, two point something. Okay, um, it's between two and three, the zero value, okay? Uh, so it's two point something, maybe, a, yeah? And the question is, is, what is this something? And what you have to do now is, is you have to kind of look uh, at the place where two lines are exactly opposite of each other. You see this here, okay? Yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, here it's uh, shifted apart um, here as well, but here um, it's exactly the same. So, and then you remember this number over here, which is four. So this is actually a value of 2.4. Okay, yeah, so, um, and that's uh, basically allows you to read to the precision of a tenth of a millimeter. And then uh, when you essentially, uh, let's say, move uh, the slide, right, okay, uh, up to here, and let's say up to here, now it's a 3.3.3.6, okay, so from 2.4 to 3.6, um, and then you can subtract that, and then you know the distance that you have moved, and that uh, allows you, if you remember the position, it allows you to measure out um, how large certain objects are. 
Okay, so this is a uh, uh, yeah, this is a, um, a very convenient uh, uh, thing, and uh, also up here, yeah, on top you can actually see that the small scale um, on the left side is a little bit shorter than the right scale, right? Yeah. So this is um, this is quite useful. Uh, let me see if I can actually give you a short demonstration of this, and uh, great, I'm super well prepared because now I left my slide box um, somewhere. Just a second. Here, here we go. I'll just grab any slide here simply to illustrate this uh, to you. Of course, this works quite nicely with uh, permanent slides. And uh, I'm going to just use what is this here? A pine stem cross section. Let's use this as an example. Okay, so I'm uh, yeah putting this up here. Um, and uh, let's uh, have a look. Okay, you cannot see anything yet. I would like to go here. Okay, and uh, yeah, here we go. It's uh, basically a pine. Ah, yeah. You see, I already included a, a scale. Um, yeah, a scale bar on top. Um, I'm just gonna do that away for right now because that's something I want to talk about later. Okay. Okay. And uh, what I would like to do? Up, oh, I bumped against in, into it. Okay. And let's say if I would like to measure out uh, um, something, then uh, what I do is is uh, yeah, I basically yeah I remember one position i don't know let's say say uh, let's say that i would like to measure out the i don't know let's say uh, the thickness here from here from here to over here right okay so what i what i do is, is i simply remember now the position here i'm on top which is i have to look um yeah but uh this is 10 11 12 point 12.1 12 uh, around, right? Um, and then when I move this, like this over here, yeah? Um, yeah, from, from over here to over yeah, here, let's say now it is uh, 11 point, difficult to see, 11.2, um, then basically I subtract that and then this gives me the actual distance uh, that I have moved, okay? Yeah. So all you have to do is, is you somehow have to remember one point. Um, yeah, maybe maybe even you can use the edge of the of the eyepiece, uh, for example, as a reference. And then you move it a certain distance. Yeah, you uh, write it down again, um, and then the values you subtract those values, and then that that is basically the the distance uh, that uh, yeah you've you've covered. Right, so that's um, a relatively simple and straightforward way to estimate um, estimate distances. Of course, this only works with non-moving objects. Okay, um, but uh, yeah, um, essentially that's uh, um, I would say the first thing that I would like, uh, yeah, that I would try out. So um, I am going to uh, go through over here. There was a form question. Badil is asking, do you know how resin-based mounting media are filtered? Can I buy? Those filters anywhere? I'm confused. Uh, why, what do you mean with filtered? Um, generally, resin-based mounting media, there are many of them around. I mean, the traditional one, um, yeah, UK is, is, is a classic one, for example. They use solvents. And, and usually uh, these mounting media, when they are properly made, they should, you should not need to filter them in any way. Uh, they should be degassed by all means, but that is something that the company should have already done. Okay, so um, I'm not quite sure about the filtering um, aspect here. Okay, um, yeah, so um, I quickly scroll down more. Okay, okay. Um, if you would like, uh, yeah, I'd love to join the micro, the forum. Yeah, please do sign up um, and send me an email, okay? And then just a, a one-line email that you would like to be unlocked with your email address or your login name, and then I'll quickly unlock you, okay? Do you know any other simple and safe dyes that we can buy? Well, um, the thing is the following. Mm. <laughs> Uh, safety is such an issue, uh, you know. Um, methylene blue is a very popular one. Um, and it is reasonably safe. Um, you see, no dye is exactly is entirely safe because they all react with the biological materials, right? Uh, but I know that methylene blue um, has already been used also, for example, for disinfection of of, uh, um, of aquariums and so on. Um, you can use iodine. 
uh, just be careful that you don't get any iodine on your microscope because it is corrosive. Um, iodine stains starch. Um, there are a, a variety of other stains, safranin, for example. Um, so generally, um, what I would probably do, and, um, and that's something I have planned to do, is, is uh, if you use, for example, certain food colors. Uh, for example, carmine is, is, is um, also very popular and is also food coloring. Um, and it's quite strong and it stains DNA. So generally, I would say is try to obtain um, uh, substances that are readily available, maybe color for coloring Easter eggs if you're doing that um, these are generally food grade um, for example fountain pen ink also works quite well if you get the concentration right so there are a variety of things that I would uh, would uh, try out okay some eyepieces uh, uh, have a pointer inside is this helpful in measuring ah yeah that's a very important uh, thing um, some eyepieces have a pointer inside, a little uh, a wire, and this can be removed if you want to, or you can leave it in there. And what you can do, and uh, usually you can also rotate the eyepiece, and what you can do is, is instead of the pointer, you can actually buy, or you can print one on overhead foil, a, a graticule, I think it's called. It's a yeah, kind of a scale, and if you put it in there, then it is kind of superimposed um, over the image that you see. And if you see a pointer, if you have a pointer, then you can actually use that pointer for make for remembering certain um, um, uh, certain places for example one edge um, yeah um, of, of a certain structure and then you can move the the, the mechanical stage um, and then uh, basically um, yeah you know how far you can move it uh, so that uh, you're able to measure the distances yeah so um, generally um, the the pointer itself um, if it depends uh, what you want to do if you take pictures for example through the eyepiece using a mobile, mobile phone camera then of course you probably would want to remove the pointer right uh, but sometimes if you want to actually show something I'm a teacher um, in school we always I always use the pointer simply to show the students uh, the different objects yeah I made my own mounting media and I want to filter it uh, uh, because I see some dirt ah I see um, you see the <laughs> ideally um, the question is now the following is is it really dirt or is it simply non dissolved um, uh, substance you know that's I think in uh, yeah um, if you want to filter it um, then um, yeah you I think you might have to um, uh, to use a little bit of pressure because in many cases the mounting media are a little viscous so what you might want to do is, is maybe um, either take a very fine metal mesh but you might have to press it um, possibly um, through through a syringe for example I don't know if I have a syringe here yeah I mean what you could ima uh, think it's a huge one um, think about is, is maybe uh, put some cotton in here um, or something like that and kind of try to press it uh, through the syringe provided provided that the solvent in the mounting medium does not attack uh, the plastic okay yeah. so um, yeah so what I'll do now is, is uh, the following so this was uh, basically one thing here um, I, I go back now to the let me remove this here uh, to the desk view and I would like to now show you the other thing here we're, we're, I always have to put it back correctly where is the desk view again okay yeah so this was let's put this away so this was the one thing so um, I bought myself and maybe um, I have all already in the previous one of the previous uh, sessions showed it to you I bought myself um, this uh, yeah it's called a calibration slide let's make it a little bit larger here by moving this down which I find to be quite useful um, I, I think I bought it somewhere on over Amazon or so okay let's turn the lights off okay and um, essentially let's read what we've got over here this is your one division is 0 0.1 millimeter so that's uh, basically 100 micrometers one division is uh, 0 0.01 millimeter which is 10 micrometers so that would be approximately the size a little bit larger than the size of a red blood cell a dot with the diameter of 0 0.15 millimeter and a dot of 0 0.07 millimeters okay um, and generally what I use is I always use the 10 micrometer ones or the 0 0.01 millimeter one okay so this is um, yeah the thing that I would like to show you what I've done now um, I need before I do that I need to I want to talk a little bit about the whole issue about magnification because I'm receiving quite a lot of um, 
comments and uh, beneath the YouTube videos, also some, occasionally some emails, where people want to know what magnification am I actually using. And you've probably already noticed that I'm not uh, writing any magnification into my YouTube videos. I also do not include a scale bar. And uh, there, there is a reason uh, for this. Um, and uh, it's actually I've been thinking quite a bit on how to solve this issue or the problem. But it's like this. If I um, say, for example, um, if, if I make a video of an, of an object, right, and um, I'm using my 10 times um, objective. Okay, let me just move this up here again. Okay, let's say I'm, I'm using my, I need to focus this. Uh, let's say I'm using my, my 10 times objective here. Um, what magnification am I supposed to write um, on the video? 10 times? No, that's not correct. Uh, because uh, there are two different types of magnifications. Um, the magnification that you see on screen depends on how big your computer screen is, right? Um, so this is, uh, or how large you make the video, right? Um, so there are actually two different types of magnifications. One of them is called linear magnification, and that is um, essentially the magnification of how much larger is the object displayed on paper, on screen, compared to real life, right? And this is a different type of magnification than what we have here, um, yeah, on the microscope. And, and this is, uh, causes us some, some issues. If, for example, I use, um, I don't know, my 10 times uh, magnif uh, magnifying um, uh, objective here, um, how much bigger is it then on, um, on the camera? Well, it depends on so many factors, on the camera size, the size on, 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 on the pixel density, and so on. Um, so this uh, essentially says very little um, um, yeah, um, um, about the actual size, right? Um, and the one way that you can solve that problem is, is by including a scale bar. Now, what I usually do when I make uh, videos, uh, um, I usually use a, choose a magnification, and uh, you see the cell moving around in the center. And then what I do um, in post-processing uh, in, in the video editing program is, is I, I, crop, I, I zoom in. I crop away all of the unnecessary part to make the specimen really large. Right, um, and then I'm adding some magnification again. Right, so um, again, it doesn't match with uh, yeah with the other footage that I have because I'm zooming in at different uh, amounts, and for this reason, actually writing a magnification value um, on top of the video really does not make a lot of sense. What I could do, and I have done this also in the past, is I simply included the magnification of the objective. Yeah, so for example, right now. I mean, uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's go back again <laughs> to to the yeah to one of those. Uh, to uh, I'll, I'll pick another one, uh, another random one over here. Yeah. What is this here? Flower. Okay. And uh, where is the scope? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, that's basically uh, the yeah. It doesn't really matter, right? Um, yeah. So now you know because you see the image above here, right? Uh, now you know that I'm using a ten times magnifying, uh, yeah, um, in ten times objective. But this does not mean that it's ten times larger, right? It, it's actually much more than just ten times larger on screen, right? Um, so this is a, a little bit the issue that I'm having, and for this reason, I, I don't like to include uh, magnification values because they're they're quite confusing sometimes. But sometimes it might be actually necessary because you want to do some proper measurements, and this is when you um, actually want to use uh, those calibration slides. Okay, and I'm going to now show this uh, to you um, how this actually looks like, um, and I'm going to I'm flipping it around like this. And I'm just going to show you how this, um, I'm just going to add it here. I'm going to start with the low power over here. I have to go back to the scope and let's have a look of what we see here. Okay, let's uh, read the, the engravings here first. I'm going to swing out my condenser so that I get a full field of view. Now you see those rainbow colors, that is because of the um, DIC prism and the polarization, so I'm going to remove that as well. So I've got now regular bright field. You see that the slide is a little bit dusty and dirty. Yeah, here it says this one division is 0.01 millimeter. Yeah, then the next one is... Uh, ah, okay, no, I, I didn't start at the beginning. The beginning is here. Ah, here we go, right? So here, one division is 0.1 millimeter. It's 100 micrometers. This one over here is one division is um, yeah, 10 micrometers, 0.0, 0 a hundredth of a millimeter. And here we got the diameter of the dot is 0 0.15 millimeters. 
and over here 0.07 millimeters of course you want to now see those objects so i'm going to move up and here is the dot of 0.07 millimeters the slide is pretty pretty dusty and dirty okay it's pretty dusty and dirty and i'm gonna tell you uh, another reason of why i consider those micrometer slides quite uh, useful besides measuring so that's the the other one is over here this is 0 0.15 one. And the next one is over here. That's the one where one division is, uh, yeah, 10 micrometers. And over here, that's the last one over here. Okay. And this is the one that I'll be using actually uh, most often. Okay. And uh, now let's uh, zoom in a little bit here. Okay. Of course, yeah. And uh, well, of course, I have to focus. Okay, and uh, how much is uh, this uh, one division? Where is the arrow? Over here is the arrow, yeah. So two tiny adjacent lines is approximately uh, yeah, 10 micrometers, which is a little bit larger than the diameter of a red blood cell. Okay, and over here again. So, um, and you see that there is this nice grid here in the middle, right? Um, of course you can, yeah. Um, and um, I did a little bit of research. I was kind of wondering what in the world do you actually need this for? Or what could you need it for? Okay, and I found a very interesting, I found a very interesting application. And uh, essentially, um, it was said the following, that um, in many cameras, many microscope cameras, DSLR cameras, they have a vibration. When you uh, have a shutter release, then um, it starts to vibrate. And uh, if you want to determine now the degree of vibration into the X or the Y axis, then um, you can actually see that over here, right? Because you see a grid, and if this grid is a little bit blurry in one direction and less in the other direction, then you know into which direction the vibration actually um, happened, Okay. Um, yeah, so so this is uh, in in that sense it, it's it's uh, it's quite uh, quite useful. Okay, and again one one of those divisions over here is uh, 0 0.01 uh, millimeter. Now I'm I'm going to go up yet uh, further, and I would like to now uh, simply show you when you focus, you can actually see that the lines are quite sharp, and quite uh, yeah. Um, yeah, rarely are you going to find in nature um, objects that are that uh, you have such sharp, clear edges. Um, and I think that's quite useful um, also for adjusting uh, the microscope. So, for example, now it's completely in focus, um, and now you would like to um, also um, have, for example, the camera in focus, par focality. And it's quite easy to do because the the print of the um, of the micrometer slide is completely flat, so there is no blurriness because of a, of a, of a focusing problem. Okay, so that is uh, quite useful. And another useful thing of this grid is is I can imagine now. Look, if 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 I line it up right here on the on, on the edges. Um, okay, I'm, you cannot see the full picture because I zoomed in, um, but I think this is also a useful way of, of testing the optics um, of your your um, uh, um, yeah um, of your objectives. Um, is there any distortion? Is there any blurriness in in the corner? So, uh, for example, if you've got plan objectives, then there should not be a blurriness. So, I think that those uh, micrometer slides are quite useful also for for um, yeah for testing a variety of other things. So, for example, you might now see that um, at the top, yeah, you see that uh, it's a little bit wider here and over here it's narrower. So my camera is not completely aligned. This is not a big problem. You know, I have to twist it a little bit. It's not a big problem, but when you do a little bit of image stitching or something like that, then that can be an issue, right? See, and I can twist the camera a little bit and now you see it's, it's, it's more aligned. Right, so this, in that sense, um, um, it, it's quite uh, quite useful as well. So I'm going to pause again. I'm going to have a look at some of the uh, the comments here. Okay. Um, so I have an Omax with only 1.3 megapixel integrated camera, but the picture on the laptop screen is really blue. Is there any adjustments you recommend changing it? 
uh, or buy a new camera, well, um, please check if you've got a blue filter in, in there um, as well. Or actually, if you've got a color cast, you just uh, might want to do a, uh, a white balance. Uh, check the, the, the basically the camera interface if there is a possibility for, um, for adjusting the white balance. Okay. Um, unless uh, the camera, yeah, um, yeah. So that that's the first thing that I, I would do, right? Um, yeah. What's the best objective upgrade uh, to buy? Look at the soil samples and compost extracts. Um, honestly, it's that's my personal view. Um, if you upgrade objectives, um, like getting better objectives, in many cases, uh, you will not see such a huge difference. Okay, so that is uh, simply something. So be very, um, yeah. In, if you really want to upgrade objectives, then I think uh, um, you have to be a little bit. Uh, you have to really know what you're doing. Otherwise, you're probably going to be disappointed. Okay. Um, do you think the Tyken steel blue layout fluid would be good for staining? Honestly, sorry, I do not know this uh, fluid. Okay, and uh, I would say is is try it out, and um, often different stains are useful for different specimens. Yeah, so I think there is not one stain that, that fits all. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, I have an idea. We should think about some topics. Uh, yeah, I would like uh, oh, definitely. Please uh, come up with some interesting topics. Yeah, because I usually always have some some headache. <laughs> Okay. Um, is there any other software I can download that will work with Omax Scope? Um, my suggestion is the following, and I don't know if this actually works, um, but many cam microscope cameras actually use a uh, the sensor from TubeTech. So um, down go to TubeTech and download the software TubeView, T-O-U-P View. Tube view, it's a free software, and um, in many cases, uh, yeah, I mean, you can do all of the color adjustments, everything there, and maybe your camera will work with that. Okay, so um, I am going down. Would lens aberrations, distortions be visible with the square pattern? Yes, of course. So that's the whole point um, because uh, the the lens, um, uh, the lens, um, uh, not the lens, the, the, the slide is completely flat. Uh, the, there's a very clearly defined print on here, um, on the slide. Um, so this basically means that uh, you don't have any focusing problems. So if anything is blurry, then you know it's out of focus, right? Um, and so you should be able to actually test your, your lenses this way. Okay. Um, do you have a cheap lens that you could quickly test to see the comparison? Oh, no, not possible because <laughs> all of the lenses are connected here and I would actually have to change microscopes and the microscope is not here right now. But that is actually something, thank you for the suggestion, that's actually something, see that's one of those recommendations, that's something that I could actually test. I think that's a pretty cool, actually a pretty cool idea, didn't think of that. Okay, thank you. No, I'll I'll, I'll do that, um, and then we can do a little bit using the square pattern some 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 testing. Okay, so um, don't you need an IP practical to put into your ocular to make uh, good use of the um, of the micrometer uh, calibration slide? You can do that, um, and what you do generally, but you don't have to. And I would like to show this to you. Generally, what you do is, is you uh, uh, may uh, put something into the eyepiece, and then you calibrate this using a calibration slide. Okay, so basically you look through the microscope, and then you always see this, um, like, um, yeah, uh, the, the scale. And then you know um, how big the things are because you calibrated that uh, with the calibration slide. But what I have done, and that's basically now the next thing that I would like to show you, I have actually uh, yeah, taken pictures of the whole thing and I have made a, um, yeah, um, basically something like this here um, on top, right? A picture, right? And uh, what I have done is, is I simply uh, took pictures of uh, the calibration slide at different magnifications. I uh, imported those pictures into PowerPoint, um, of course all at the same, all the same size, and then I've uh, basically made this uh, little thing here I've made in PowerPoint. Okay, and um, right now I'm using the, the 40 times objective, so you now know that uh, basically two lines next to each other, basically, uh, no, you cannot see that because I, <laughs> I'm using the wrong arrow here. Just a second, where is the arrow? Ah, uh, here in the corner it is. 
Okay, so you see, it's, um, I should move the arrow to the top. Okay, so you see over here that uh, this is the width uh, of one division for the 40 times objective, and that's basically this width here. So there is, of course, a little challenge that you have. I'm going to go up uh, to the 60 times here. And that is, is that those lines themselves are not, comp yeah, they also have a width, you see. So the line itself also has a certain width. So in order to actually determine the real distance, you just use, let's say over here, the right corner where the line becomes basically just at the edge of the, yeah? And then you kind of measure it also to the other edge over here, okay? So not you do not uh, use the center of the line, which there's interpretation what is the center, but it's actually much more precise if you use the, the edges, yeah? From edge to edge. And that's what I have done, and uh, basically this is uh, where I got this with you over here. And uh, what, of course, what you can do is, is look, yeah, I've simply taken the picture um, and I've uh, imported it, and you can, then, you, of course, uh, you can adjust the size as, as you want, okay? Let's go back to, to normal again, right? Um, and if you do that, something like this, um, then you can, of course, um, yeah, every time when you take a picture, you can just copy-paste, uh, basically, the scale into the picture, and then, yeah, you have, you have that. Uh, but again, you see the, the thing is 10 micrometers. <laughs> How much is that? It's difficult to imagine again, right? Um, but the advantage of, of including a scale bar is, is if you change um, the, the picture size with the scale, then it's still always going to be correct, right? Yeah. So this is, uh, yeah simply something over here that um, yeah I, I'm, I've done in the past as well um, but uh, then the question is of course always what do those values actually tell you right yeah so this is uh, simply something that I would like to yeah yeah I wanted to just share with you um, I have to tell you I'll be honest with you um, I do not know the significance and I don't even know where it is now let me go down with the magnification again. Yeah, I have to tell you, I don't know exactly the purpose. Okay, here, here, that is the this one over here. I don't know exactly the purpose of um yeah of a point like this. Okay, this is uh, something that is still a little bit um yeah. Maybe there are some uses for this, but I don't know. Maybe you yeah. That, that's still something that, uh, that um, I yet have to figure out. Yeah? But I'm quite sure that the people who designed this <laughs> certainly had something in, their, in mind, but unfortunately I'm not aware of this. Okay? Yeah, so what time is it? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I think I'm, I might actually make a, 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 a jump in, in topic. Yeah? Um, okay, my email is uh, uh, just uh, send it to oliver at microbehunter.com oliver at microbehunter.com hunter.com okay you can't you put the calibration slide over a specimen slide so that is an interesting one and i think this is there might be a problem with that because of the focus issue okay so let's have a, the, a, the following let's this is again this this flower i don't like the specimen because it's too dark so let's uh, let's remove this Unfortunately, um, it would be, it's not possible, unfortunately, but it would be kind of nice to have some kind of a laser printer or something to actually print this um, yeah, on overhead foil. I'm just going to take this here. What is this here? That's, ah, uh, yeah, it's the seed of, say, uh, seed. That's corn. Maize. The seed of maize. Okay. Let's focus this. So let's put the cal calibration slide directly over it. If I'm able to find it. You know what, I will go down with the magnification. It's easier to, to find this way. And you see that that's of course always the issue. Where is the 0 0.1 millimeter? Here is the 0 0.1 millimeter. And here is the other one, right? And um, of course, we now have the issue that um, we are not able to see both in focus because of the thickness. And the second problem is, is of course, uh, we're not able to go to a very high magnification. Why not? Because uh, otherwise there's the danger of crashing into the microscope slide. Okay. So that is something that you have to just be aware of. Yeah? So that is the... 
you see now one is in focus yeah and i have to refocus now the other one is in focus so this is a little bit um, yeah, um, yeah a disadvantage right yeah so yeah but uh, just a little proof in concept i used to have a so-called a hemocytometer as well uh, hemocytometers um, allow you to measure out uh, volumes and therefore they allow you to allow you to do cell counts because of the, the number of cells in a specified volume. So these are pretty thick uh, slides and uh, what they have is, is they have a certain, um, yeah, when you put the cover glass on top, the cover glass is not completely flat uh, with the slide, but actually there is a defined distance between the cover glass um, and, and, and the slide because there are some kind of uh, you know, bars on the side that hold up the cover glass. And this gives you a defined volume, um, which allows you to actually count the number of cells inside, um, in, inside the liquid. Yeah, I use the calibration slide to determine sizes of rotifers and uh, yeah, um, and yeah, a per a per a paramecium. I think you want to say here. Yeah. Um, okay. Can you put the scale slide upside down? That's also an, uh, something. Okay. So that is the next thing. Let's flip it around, because of course the slide is printed on one side. Okay. It should be much more flatter. Again, finding it is a challenge. I go down again to the, okay, you see? Let me, here, here we go, here we go, here we go, okay. So I flipped now the slide upside down. So now the disc, there's of course no less glass between it. So again, let's go up a little bit with it. Let's see how this uh, seems to already work a little bit better. Yeah, definitely better. Okay, uh, still not very practical, I think. Uh, st yeah, of course, there is still a, the cover glass now in between. Yeah, uh, but I think uh, much better. Yeah, thank you for the suggestion. Yeah. So this is. Uh, yeah, indeed. Um, but then again, I, I probably um, I, I would probably say that uh, it might be easier to simply uh, measure it out first for the different objectives and then simply include some kind of a picture. Yeah. So that that would be a suggestion that I have. Okay. Um, yeah. You know what I'm gonna do is, is I'm just gonna move on a little bit. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that for right now because I still want to show you a couple of water fleas just for the fun of it because I've been um, yesterday and the day before yesterday I've been making a little aquarium uh, for water fleas yeah. and uh, because of course uh, some people would like me to put also, also some living things under the microscope uh, therefore I'm going to do that as well uh, where is the desk view? okay, let's put this away again so, and uh, the other one I'm also going to take all away. So let's put it in here. And I'm going to change topics now, okay? So, let me, I'll just put this away. And where is the stereo? So that's uh, the stereo microscope, no picture, okay. That is now the image from the stereo microscope. And... Um, I would before I put them under the compound, I would like to show you a few things here as well. Um, you know what? Hmm. Maybe I'm going to change the camera around so that you see better what we're looking at. Every now and then, the camera. Okay. So I've got a, a tiny little uh, petri dish here, right? And uh, I've got some, some water fleas, Daphnia, some ostracods, other water crustaceans, okay, um, in there. The image quality is not that great, right? Uh, don't worry, it'll become better. Um, I think I already mentioned before that I'm not quite happy with the, 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 the camera setup that I have here. But I would like to simply show you now a few things here. Uh, because if you want to increase the contrast... I'm gonna show you something that unfortunately does not work. I've got a black disc here, white and black disc. And currently there is now light also coming from the bottom. So I switched the bottom light off and now I only have light from the top. I have a fairly, yeah. yeah. So this is how it looks. Um, yeah, if you wanna increase the contrast, I'm gonna show you here. It does not work so well. 
okay? Yeah. So I was actually hoping for some kind of a dark field-like effect, um, but this is unfortunately not a very good solution. We use the white side. You know, it looks a little bit like before. Um, the white uh, plastic now reflecting the light from the top. Uh, but I did find out something quite interesting. Um, yeah, look at this. This is a mirror, just a regular uh, mirror. Look what happens when you put a mirror on here. You can actually see the ring lamp. And then you put the whole thing on top. Uh, it's a little bit too bright now. Okay. Um, maybe also not a very good specimen uh, because there are so many algae and other things in there. But actually, uh, it allows you to see the specimens now on a much darker background. So that's simply a, a thing that I just found out recently. Is if you want to really, with a stereo microscope, if you really want to get the background dark, uh, put the specimen on, on uh, put a specimen on, on, on the mirror, right? Unfortunately, now see some of the, uh, some of those uh, water fleas also double. <laughs> Okay, because of the reflection as 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 well. Yeah? But it's simply something I just wanted to share with you. Uh, that this is also something you might want to try out. Okay, so but uh, before, um, uh, yeah, I put them under the microscope. Why the whole thing and, and what have I been doing? I just want to show you a quick video. Okay, um, over here, uh, what I've been doing uh, last time, a couple of days ago. Um, uh, yeah, I took uh, a jar. And that's uh, some uh, Elodia, Igeria or Elodia, some water plant that I had floating around in a jar as well. This is uh, from a sponge. And uh, this is some kind of a ceramic ring. Yeah, And I simply uh, put the water plant uh, yeah, in there and uh, put it into the, um, yeah, into the gravel and added some, some tap water. Now that is uh, quite something, <laughs> tap water, right? Uh, because the water fleas, they might not like the osmotic shock. And then over here, I added uh, the pond water um, with uh, the water fleas, yeah? Um, and uh, so basically I inoculated it um, and uh, then I had, uh, now I have a few hundred water fleas in there, right? Um, I added a little bit of yeast to feed them and now I have um, yeah, a large uh, source of, uh, <laughs> an unlimited source of water fleas if you want uh, to look at them. Um, basically, yeah, now the video uh, loops again. I just want to show you now the, the desk view here, uh, what I've got here, because I've actually got the jar over here. So, yeah, here, here it is. You, it's a, you won't see them quite well, I think, but there are several hundred of them in there, although some very small ones. And um, it's like this, that um, I really washed the gravel very well to make sure that there is, all of the dirt is gone. And and, uh, um, and uh, the water plant um, itself uh, provides oxygen now, um, doing photosynthesis. You, know, you can actually see that maybe if you look very carefully, you can actually see some of them uh, swim around. Um, and um, essentially, I've also found some snails in there already. And uh, there is no need for adding some uh, the air bubbles or so, because if you just leave it open like this, then I think the water plant will get enough uh, um, air with carbon dioxide to do photosynthesis. And also, the, the water fleas will produce a little bit of uh, carbon dioxide as well. Yeah, So they've been now more or less uh, swimming around happily for a few days. My initial worry was by um, actually when you put it into tap water, big worry was of course the osmotic change that maybe some of them might not survive this, but actually they survived it quite well, I think. Yeah? They didn't mind so much. Huh? So uh, uh, this was actually um, quite a nice uh, little project. Just a second. I've got some, some yeast, some dry yeast here. And what I usually do is, is I take a couple of grains of this dry yeast. You don't want to overfeed them. And then you just, I just drop, look, I just drop some of them yeah, in here. Yeah. So that's the, those white spots, that's basically the dry yeast. Um, it's going to start dissolving and then it's going to sink down and then the, yeah, they have something to eat. There's the second thing I want to show you. And what I have over here is, is I also tried that, um, is... Uh, I need, I'm going to move this over. It's, it's, these are just some regular wheat grains. And what you need to do is, is you need to crush them. You need to crush them open. How do you do that? Actually, you use two spoons to crush them between two spoons. I don't have... Wow, okay. I don't have them now with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to crush it using a 
my glassware on my table. Okay, so I just crushed it on my table. Okay, so this will of course release the starch. And uh, what I'm gonna do is, is this is the original pond water sample over here. And uh, as you see, it's so way greener. And then you simply drop it in here. And I've uh, tried this already a few days ago, and I was a little bit surprised on how quickly they've eaten this. You could actually see that some of the ostracods really started to eat away on those starch grains. And then after a day or so, it was all hollowed out already. So they really kind of loved it. And uh, yeah, and this is how I was able to also um, reproduce them uh, quite a bit. Okay. Um, so let me quickly go back to, uh, um, to the, some of the questions. Um, so, uh, according to ChatGPT, the dots on the calibration slide can be useful to measure a point spread function. I know this is also used in astronomy where stars are point. Point spread function, that is interesting. <laughs> interesting, okay. Did same plus large rock of moss, it's cheap and beautiful lot of life? Yes. Um, and I never feed them. It's self-sustained with the sun from 10 months. Now that's good. Um, yes, if you have, uh, for example, uh, a lot of algae in there, okay, like in this case, uh, it, you know it, there's, it's quite green, um, then um, they will actually, the algae will produce organic material. Okay, um, and not only oxygen, but they will actually sequester carbon and they will produce uh, organic material because then they're at the beginning of a food chain and therefore it's not necessary to, to feed them. Now, I have fed them and this caused uh, over a couple of days quite an increase in the number, obviously, an increase in the number of, of, um, of those water fleas. However, um, yeah, then of course, if you stop feeding them, then there might not be enough food there anymore. Okay. Um, for the dark field effect with a stereo microscope, I use a small box with a black painted inner wall and a small hole on top. Ah, it, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. So with the hole, it makes a very dark background. Thank you very much for the, for the comment. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you something. Where is the, yeah, let's just put them just for the fun of it. Where is this? Yeah, here they are again. Um, I'm going to put a few of them under the microscope now. Just, I mean, you've probably already seen uh, some of them before already. Uh, this is a disposable plastic pipette. You can see there are lots of algae here already on here. And what I've done is I've cut off the tip a little bit to make it a little bit larger, right? And uh, what, where's my slide? I'm going to now use a slide with a concave, okay? So simply to hold the, the water a little bit better. And now, yeah, it's a little bit difficult to see. Maybe somewhat randomly, I'm going to take up some of them. I'm going to put them on here. Yeah, I can already see that there, and all of the excess water you might want to, yeah. And those um, Daphnia, ostracods, water fleas, whatever, cyclops, um, they will um, generally move around very quickly. Uh, but if you uh, just, um, <clears throat> give it very little water and because of uh, yeah the surface tension of the water um, they're not able to move very much okay but they're also not going to dry out and uh, um, but at least they're going to stay put so let's uh, let's try this where is this uh, i think i'm just going to turn off now the scale bars again and uh, yeah that's the one let's see I have to find them. Usually we start off with the lowest. Oh yeah. This one doesn't look very happy anymore. Uh-huh. <laughs> not 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 in a very good <laughs> So what about the over here? That it's the same one? I have to find it, find, find, find it. Ah, that's an ostracod. Okay. No, I think I have to try this again. Okay, so let's try it again. There are only two of them here and one of them. Um, what if I was also able to see yesterday is I actually saw one of them molting. So that means uh, shedding yeah, the exoskeleton. So, yes, yes, this one is, is moving already. 
So let's have a look now. Oh yeah, I have to switch. That's the yeah one from before. Now uh, that's again an ostracod. Ah oh yeah, here here here's one. Okay. Um, because of the yeah uh, DIC, uh, that's why we get those rainbow colors. Okay. So and uh, I'm not using any cover glass right now because the cover glass would actually crush them. Let's turn off the arrow as well. Yeah. And uh, you probably some of you might have already seen some of the videos that I made. Yeah. And one of the things that I really like to see here, can go maximum, yeah, is if you look at the eye, you can actually see the muscles that are moving the eye. It's actually quite nice uh, to observe. Yeah, look, these are the yeah. That's the eye, of course, here. And look, uh, there are those uh, long extensions over here. Um, these are the seem to be the muscles that are moving moving the eye, right? Yeah. So, is it a female? Well, let's have a look here on the back side. This is the heart. And what do we have here on the back side? These are, of course, the eggs. Okay. You know, so we see that. Uh, um, actually, I found uh, quite a few of them with eggs, so apparently the conditions are quite fine for them um, for reproduction. And uh, indeed, I've seen that uh, there are already very small uh, water fleas also visible. That is the intestine. Okay, the end of the intestine. Occasionally, you can actually see them <clears throat> poop. It's also quite, <laughs> yeah. And uh, you can also see that uh, there are, of course, particles moving around because uh, this is uh, what they're doing is they're filtering the water, of course, yeah, and uh, therefore, um, yeah, they're using this as, uh, yeah, as a food source, yeah. The heart frequency is so fast it measures in beats per second, huh? okay, uh, so uh, this here in front, that is, of course, not the heart. What is the heart? Is this here in the back? And indeed, uh, I did some months ago, last year, maybe I make a video, you can, and that's actually one of those classical school experiments that you do with those petafnia, you can add, of course, a little bit of, of caffeine, and uh, you, yeah, and then this can actually change, this will actually change the heartbeat, or if you add alcohol, it will actually slow down the heartbeat. Yeah, so you can actually see that uh, yeah, they obviously have a nervous system which also responds to certain substances, right? And uh, so you can actually do some some um, yeah experiments uh, this way as well, yeah, where the behavior um, and the speed of the heartbeat changes uh, based on um, yeah the chemicals that you add. Yeah. So, but I'm not going to do that now. Um, but rather what I would like to do is the following. I'm going to now take some of the yeast here and I'm going to make a little yeast suspension and I'm going to feed it some yeast, uh, not because I want to feed it necessarily, but because the yeast cells are very nice for making the water movement visible. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of water now. You cannot see that because you're still looking at the... So I've just added in a little dish here Right, a little bit of yeast with a little bit of water, and uh, I'm just dissolving the whole thing a little bit. takes a uh, takes a minute or so. A pipette, okay, and uh, I'm just going to dissolve some of the yeast, and I'm going to. Simply put a small drop of this yeast suspension right on the Daphnia. And uh, the, um, in a book I read, <laughs> what they actually suggested is, is that uh, you stain the yeast cells first. Uh, because when you stain them, then you can actually see them better um, in, go through the digestive system of the Daphnia. And, and, yeah. By the way, I'm not even sure if this is a Daphnia. It must it could be a different species as well because Daphnia they have these spikes. No, it doesn't seem to be one. They have those long spikes, uh, yeah, on the back. So um, we're gonna do the following like this, okay? And uh, yeah, you see st some of the movement already because of the algae. But I'm going to add now um, a little bit, a small amount of yeast suspension. 
Okay. Maybe it even senses that that I've added something here. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you can now actually see uh, quite interesting the vortex, and one of the things that is also quite. Uh, Notable if you just look where it's uh, drawn in, where the yeast cells are drawn in. Almost it normally looks like, uh, yeah, you've got the eye here and you might think that this here is the mouth, right? It's not. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a mouth or a nose. Yeah, it's actually drawn in somewhere down here, the yeast cells. Yeah, so somehow, yeah, it, yeah, it must go in here somehow, yeah, into the digestive system. Yeah, and uh, um, you, by the way, um, you can also do something similar with uh, with other water microorganisms, like for example, Paramecia or so, right? Um, which uh, you can um, add a small drop, a very small drop of milk, because the fat droplets in the milk will also um, indicate the movement yeah, um, of the water. So. So this is uh, quite, uh, yeah. Um, will that, uh, let, let me quickly read here. What is moving close to the eye? Looks like bacteria or the small dots. Ah, yeah, could be, um, or it could be something that they have taken up. Um, yeah, some, yeah. Um, will Daphne survive bath of 90% alcohol or more? No, definitely not. I tried it out. <laughs> um, if you uh, go uh, too high with the alcohol, the alcohol does several things. It, of course, will dissolve all of the uh, uh, fat. It will denature proteins as well. Um, it will break down the cell membranes. Uh, um, it will attack the nerve cells, of course. Um, and uh, alcohol, concentrated alcohol, will also pull out and withdraw water. So it will cause some form of dehydration as well. Okay. So it's not going to... Uh, yeah, they're not able to survive that. Yeah. So, what's the large organ rotating in the lower region? Um, let's let's see. Uh, again, I'm not I'm not uh, so much into uh, anatomy of water crustaceans. Okay, but uh, if you're looking, if you actually want to know what this part here is, that is the end of the intestine, and sometimes actually you can actually see that waste is expelled here. Okay. So yeah, it, sometimes they actually move it, it moves out, and then some waste is um, expelled as well. Yeah. Um, I have a question that is related to biology. I sometimes wonder what to. I cannot read this here because unfortunately there is it's covered up. What do you really call an animal? Sometimes biology makes daily words confusing. Ah, it's an interesting one. <laughs> what is an animal? Um, <laughs> um, I mean, the animal it, it, tradition. The animal is a multi. Well, <laughs> is a taxonomic criterion, which is a multi. It's defined as being a multicellular organism um, without uh, cell walls, uh, which are heterotrophs. Okay, um, and strictly speaking. Um, if you really want to go in very exactly, you have to find a genetic definition for it, right? Um, but uh, an animal is actually one of the five kingdoms. Yeah, a tardigrade is an animal. That is correct. Yeah, um, there are certain characteristics that animals have in common, but uh, essentially they are uh, metazoans, which are basically multicellular um, uh, organisms. Um, and then, of course, you have, if you go back into history, you have the whole debate a little bit to what example is, is um, at that time in the past they used uh, certain criteria like, for example, um, it eats food, for example, organic food, right? Then it's an animal, right? Um, and then all of a sudden they found certain protozoans like Euglena, which was able to make their own food by photosynthesis and also eat food. So they had the debate, is it now an animal or is it a plant? Um, so indeed, back in the day, there were debates on that. Uh, but we now know that, uh, for example, Euglena is a protozoan. It's a single cell. It's a single cell eukaryote, right? And pr therefore, per definition, it's not. It's not an animal, right? Um, so to a certain extent, uh, the categories that we have are, are you know, defined by human beings, right? Yeah. So. Um, 
and algae, fungus, and mold are not. Uh, al well, algae, <laughs> again, that's a very broad term. Are you talking about uh, um, uh, eukaryotic algae? Yeah, yeah then, then these are basically uh, uh, related to the plants. Um, some people call um, diatoms algae, but strictly speaking, they're not algae. Um, in, in, in the past, they called uh, cyanobacteria blue-green algae, but actually they're bacteria. So what we have here is, is that uh, the term algae uh, sometimes has been used in different ways in the past. So um, that is also an, a, another thing. Uh, fungus and mo uh, mold and fun fungi, for example, are another um, uh, uh, kingdom. Yeah. Uh, so what is that grid? So that is um, also an interesting thing here. Um, if you look at the um, um, at the exoskeleton um, um, here, then you can see a grid. And I've also kind of wondered: Are these individual cells? And I don't know about that. Um, yeah, um, actually, the exoskeleton is made of chitin, which is um, actually um, basically secreted by uh, secreted by, uh, by by cells. So I'm not quite sure if these actually represent individual cells, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do. Okay. So that is, yeah, um, I can imagine that they probably must be cells because otherwise uh, how would you actually have the exoskeleton there, right? So uh, let me see if there, is there any, anything else? Uh, what time? Let me see uh, over here. Yeah, that's an ostracod, okay. They generally um, are, uh, they have, uh, yeah, they look like, uh, like clams, like little uh, seashells, but of course they're not. Okay. You know what? I'm going to try. I'm going to try to find uh, um, another one. And uh, then, okay, let me refocus this. Okay. Uh, let's, it's a little bit a question of, of, of good luck here. Yeah, there's, I can hardly see it. Uh, yes. I'm going to remove again the excess water here. And uh, we're going to put it back again here. So, where is the scope? Uh, yeah, here an ostracod. Uh, some of these things could actually be the the. It looks like ah, yeah. Yesterday I saw the same thing here. This looks like it's dead, but actually it's it just um, a, um, the exoskeleton was which was shed off. Yeah, because as they grow, they shed off their exoskeleton and uh, they're molting, right? And so sometimes you actually see those uh, those empty skins as well. Yeah. So let's have a look here. Yeah, the, it's an ostracod. That's another one over here. And uh, it's another ostracod. Yeah. So. Ah, yeah, there's another thing I just wanted to mention. Um, uh, some time ago, um, may maybe some of you have heard of those so called uh, the, the brine shrimp, or they also sell them under the brand name Sea Monkeys. Um, usually, they, yeah, for kids, they have those kits. Where you get the powder with the salt and, and the sea monkey eggs, which is um, Artemia salina is the scientific name. And uh, then you can breed your own uh, a sh a tiny little shrimp um, yeah, um, at home. Um, I tried that and it works. Uh, people who have an aquarium sometimes actually will uh, grow them as uh, fish food. But I think, and that's kind of my view here, is, is that actually growing and keeping those water fleas is actually much easier. I mean, for example, those water fleas in the jar here I've already kept over a year. And every time when water evaporated, I added a little bit more water. Because these are freshwater organisms, um, there is, you don't have to worry about salt concentrations, about getting the salt concentrations right. And uh, in that sense, it's quite, uh, they're quite easy to keep. So especially if you've got children, maybe that you want to do something, a project with, yeah, and, or uh, school projects, yeah, then I think uh, then they're quite uh, quite uh, uh, suitable as well. Yeah? And you find them readily in, I mean, you can buy them in, in, in even um, in, in, in shops uh, for as fish food, or you just go out to a pond and, uh, and just uh, get some, some, some water, yeah? some pond water. 
Can you see them with a the naked eye? Yes, of course. Uh, they, they, they are pretty about a millimeter, two millimeters large. Uh, the, the tiny ones, uh, the, the, the small ones can, uh, are, yeah, um, are difficult to see. But the magnification right now here, this is four times. Yeah, um, yeah. And um, you know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the desk here. Um, there's a question about chlorinated water. Definitely not chlorinated. Okay. So what you can do is um, if you don't have uh, uh, tap, um, yeah, tap water is not good for several reasons. So you basically can actually see this here. I, I just a second, I'll give you a recommendation in, in a minute, right? You see there's several of them here, right? Um, if you add too much water, then they're going to swim all over the place and, and, and difficult to, yeah, difficult to chase. Yeah. Um, so what you do is the following. Um, you simply buy buy yourself bottled water, okay, and that'll be fine. Non-carbonated bottled water, and if this is not an option, if you only have if you only have chlorinated water, then um, get some of the chlorinated water and let it stand open in a jar for a couple of days for the chlorine to escape. But generally, still, um, I would say, um, yeah, probably better to to simply use bottled water non-carbonated bottled water obviously yeah, because uh, but then i also heard that if you add carbon that's next thing because if you add carbon dioxide you will also kind of uh, they also don't like that yeah because they uh, require of course uh, lots of oxygen as well yeah because they're always constantly moving and so on yeah? um i really invite people to get a, a pond sample uh, yeah uh, it's just a nice uh, looking at a jar on your desk, okay? Um, yeah, just put a, uh, yeah, it in, in uh, yeah, that's the, one of the reasons why I actually made uh, made this here, uh, because it kind of looks nice. Um, and uh, if you basically have a, um, um, some water plants growing in there, like a little aquarium, then you also have, you always have some samples to look at as well, yeah? Distilled water, no, 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 please don't use distilled water, okay? Um, uh, really, um, the thing is, is, is uh, you're really gonna um, distilled water does not contain any minerals, and this really might, uh, um, yeah, upset um, <laughs> them a little bit because uh, um, it's gonna throw off uh, the osmotic balance. Okay, um, I was already worried uh, of having added norm um, the tap water that we have is not chlorinated, but I'm kind of I was kind of worried already by adding uh, some of the tap water this might actually kill them. It didn't. Um, so they were quite uh, resilient, um, but I can imagine distilled water is not a good thing. Yeah, um, is not uh, not a good thing uh, to do here. By the way, you should not be drinking large amounts of distilled water anyway. Um, it's also not good for our body. Yeah? Even th even though it's pure water, but the lack of uh, the lack of minerals actually um, causes uh, the cells uh, to uh, may maybe some of the cells to actually pop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I believe the calibration dots on the calibration slide are being used to calibrate objectives in software. Ah, interesting. Okay. Is uh, drinking water okay? Bottled drinking water, I see absolutely no problem. Okay. Um, what I would recommend though, and this is what I have done, is if you want to, um, this base, I mean, uh, over 20 years ago, I had a, a real aquarium. Um, it was so much work that I stopped uh, having it. Um, but one of the things that they generally recommend is if you want to um, add, if you add gravel, for example, or some rocks, um, or even some pieces of wood, like like old roots, it's uh, recommended that you really clean them well, not with any soap or anything, because that's really bad for the microorganisms and for the for the the, the, the water fleas and so on. Because there's always going to be a little bit of um, a soap left over. You cannot completely remove it, and that's going to hurt them. Um, but um, it's recommended that you boil it. Okay, because this will actually remove, uh, um, yeah, also certain uh, yeah, dirt better and so on. And uh, if you do not boil it, then it could actually be that the water will start to become very discolored. Yeah? Um, so you basically use combinations of dots and objectives to calibrate each objective, and you can then save a calibration profile for each objective in the software. Ah, that's interesting. Could it maybe be that? Okay, so maybe I, I, I'm, I'm guessing right now. I'm guessing right now. What you do is, is uh, in the calibration, you move the dot maybe um, to different places and then maybe by just seeing how 
um, yeah, the position maybe, or if it's distorted, maybe you can calibrate the objective. Do they interact with sugar? Oh, look, there's a, there's a tiny one on, on, on top here. Do they interact with sugar? Yeah, but that's dangerous. Because if you add too much sugar, then you're again going to mess up the osmotic balance. Just a second. Here it is. Look what I got here. This <laughs> I got some. This is uh, yeah, uh, glucose. <laughs> but it's way I don't know. It's it's totally uh, overdue. And look, I don't know if you're able to see this. It's kind of interesting. It started to change color here um, and, um, as well. Okay, so maybe there's some fungus growing on here because it was not properly stored. Um, if I were to add this now, a small amount uh, to the Daphnia, then this is, I'm quite sure that they're not going to like this, right? Um, because this is going to uh, be too concentrated unless I take a very small amount. Um, and uh, then essentially um, it might again uh, cause, this, uh, cause this, their cells to lose too much water. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a little bit the thing. Yeah. Uh, where are they? Ah, uh, here, there. Okay. Oh, I see. I, I didn't. Somebody mentioned this. Are we observing birth here? Ah, look at this. Isn't this cool? Larger magnification. I think, I think we're observing a birth here. That, that's why there was this tiny one before. Ah, that's nice. Um, <laughs> yes, they're being born now. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to wait now. This is pretty fun. I was already wondering. Yeah, I was already wondering why. Yeah. Um, maybe I should add a little more water. I don't know. Ha! Ah. Another one. Gonna add a bit more water. Maybe there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe there. Maybe it's too constrained for them. I don't know. I just missed it. Uh, yeah. That's the ostracod. There's still a few more in here. Let's make, make it a little smaller again. Of course, I'm going to put them back then in, into, the, um, into the jar. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a nice coincidence here. That we're able to see the birth of, of yeah. Yeah, let's wait a little more. Hmm. Um, sorry if I missed it, but are you keeping it simply in a jar of tap water? No, um, I actually used pond water, but every time when the water evaporated, uh, yeah, I added a little bit of tap water. So essentially the, the change in water was not too extreme for them. Yeah. So that is, uh, yeah, so that's, that's quite nice. <laughs> yeah. So. To add a little more water here. Maybe it makes it easier. Hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not able to record this now. I mean, I am recording it, but uh, for for my for another YouTube video, for a separate YouTube video, that would be kind of nice. Uh, so what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to remove the arrow. Yeah. 
<laughs> and here the small ones are yeah, moving around. <laughs> Yeah, and the ostracod. Yeah, annoying ostracod. <laughs> yeah, what time is it? Wow, it's already uh, one hour and, and and twenty minutes. That's another ostracod over there. Yeah, it's quite nice to see. Uh, yeah, a little indeed, a little bit unexpected, but it actually shows that uh, uh, those uh, water crustaceans they give live birth. Um, maybe I'm guessing right now maybe uh, because if they were to lay eggs maybe then um, it, the eggs could be easily eaten by other water animals I could imagine yeah so um, is it making it no it's not making it yeah so yeah the ostracod yeah almost almost made it <laughs> Ah, yeah, birth is a complicated process. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine that maybe um, it's difficult because of the surface tension of the water droplet. Maybe that is kind of also pressing it down a little bit and therefore it's not able to open up quite as um, easily. I could imagine. Yeah. Ah, again, not. So, another drop. Yeah, you did. They don't want to come out. <laughs> I read uh, that as winter approaches, Daphnia uh, change from live birth to laying eggs, which sink to the bottom and stay there till the next spring when the temperature increases. Ah, that's interesting. Thank you for the info. Yeah. Well, I was actually once informed uh, by someone that actually what we're looking at here is, is, I don't know the name now, is actually strictly speaking not Daphnia taxonomically because Daphnia actually have a much longer tail. Yeah, but uh, of course they're uh, being water crustaceans are related. Uh, here, here are the babies again on the bottom. Yeah. Now we've got two ostracods. <laughs> Okay, that was actually quite uh, quite nice. Um, yeah, so um, what I'm going to do now, of course, is I'm going to put them back um, into um, in, into the um, into the jar. Um, but yeah, still stuck in, in there. But I think what I'm going to do, in any case, I'm going to do right now is I'm going to um, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, what I'm going to uh, I'm working on anyway on a video now um, where I kind of show you how to how I made the, the this mini aquarium. Um, I might actually um, when I stop the live stream in a few minutes, I might actually uh, continue recording this. Maybe I'm able to get a better uh, better footage of, of the birth here um, and uh, then I'll make a separate video um, in for the channel over here okay so um, and uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm slowly going to stop because uh, at least here where I am living uh, that we have to change to summertime and this basically means one hour less sleep and <laughs> and it's already um, 11 o'clock at night at there where I am so it's quite late already and therefore in this for this reason i think it's slowly time to um to stop um and i'll keep watching this and recording this and then i'll share uh, with you um yeah uh, the footage maybe i'm able to to capture a little bit uh, some better footage without those two disturbing ostracods that are not being really annoying here <laughs> okay uh yeah, I, I wish you all the best uh, for right now. I hope uh, that uh, that you liked it. If you have any recommendations uh, on on what to uh, what you want me to put on the microscope, please. Um, I'm 
always very grateful for suggestions. I think I already have a topic um, that essentially I would like to use the micrometer slide to do some objective testing. Um, yeah, maybe see some distortions uh, in, in certain objectives or clarity. Uh, yeah, so that is something that I might actually indeed do. So I'm going to pick up on your suggestion. Yeah, I'm going to indeed. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it at that for today. Um, I would. Uh, yeah. Uh, I wish you I wish you all the best. Uh, happy micro hunting. Have a good day. Happy Easter if you celebrate Easter. Um, at least uh, maybe some of you have uh, a couple of days off uh, these days now. And uh, I wish wish you all the best. Uh, see you around next time. Bye bye.